back around the same time, uh, urged that people should be directed to what it called the more superficial things of life, like fashionable consumption. Uh, that'll keep them away from trying to participate in decision-making through the political process, uh, let alone in their working lives as 19th century workers demanded. Uh, by now, uh, marketing is about one-sixth of the economy, and much of marketing is just pure propaganda. Uh, same thing is happening to elections. Increasingly, especially in the last 30 years, they're PR extravaganzas. Uh, that's particularly since the 1970s when uh, major changes took place in the economy. I'll come back to that. Uh, we're now in a situation where uh, both markets and democracy are being very effectively undermined by the business classes and others who praise them to the skies. Uh, if you've ever taken an economics course, uh, you've learned that uh, markets are based on uh, rational, on informed consumers making rational choices. And you're supposed to repeat that when you take an exam. Uh, if you've ever looked at television and looked at an ad, you know that business is pouring huge efforts into creating uninformed consumers who will make irrational choices. Uh, they want to undermine markets in their own interest. Uh, so, for example, if we had a market system and, say, General Motors was advertising a car, uh, they'd put up a small ad saying, uh, here are the characteristics of the cars that we're going to sell next year or try to sell. Well, you know, they don't do that. Uh, what they do is uh, uh, have a famous football player or a Hollywood actress or somebody uh, car performing some miraculous thing, you know, and uh, uh, the effort is to try to delude you, to try to create uninformed consumers who will make irrational choices, uh, thus undermining markets. Uh, and uh, democracies undermine the same way. Not surprisingly, it's the same people. PR agencies who uh, put up the ads are also running the elections. So in elections, you don't provide information about the candidates. It's the last thing you want to do. Uh, what you do is uh, try to delude people with uh, 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 rhetorical uh, uh, devices, with uh, slogans, and so on and so forth. But keep the issues out of sight. Uh, good reasons for that. Come back to it. Well, it, this has been going on since the 19... I mean, it goes on way back, but there was an upsurge in the 1970s. Uh, you all know what happened in the 60s. Uh, in the, uh, and there was a huge corporate backlash against the popular uprisings of uh, the 60s, which were really civilizing the society and making it more democratic and free. That's unacceptable. Uh, there was also a lot of legislation uh, in the public interest and against the interests of business, like the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, OSHA, defending safety standards, uh, health and safety standards for working people, uh, the Earned Income Tax Credit, uh, uh, probably the most important uh, liberal measure since the New Deal. Uh, there was the Co Consumer Product uh, Safety Commission, the very sharp expansion of Social Security and other social measures. All of this, incidentally, was under Nixon. Uh, Nixon was the last liberal president. After that, it's all back to the Stone Age. And business was appalled by this. The, right at that time, there was a vast increase in lobbyists to shape and control legislation, actually to write it, to serve corporate interests. Uh, there was the beginnings of the major attack on regulation, uh, which is an interference with uh, corporate prerogatives and also protects the economy and people, but it doesn't matter. Uh, all of this was expanded substantially under Reagan and even more so under his successors, uh, Clinton and Bush. Most of it under Clinton, in fact. Uh, the, uh, there were th new think tanks were established, like the Heritage Foundation, uh, to try to take over the ideological spectrum. Uh, the cost of campaigns uh, skyrocketed at that time. Uh, that compelled the parties uh, 
to become supportive of business uh, for the Republicans. It's kind of second nature. Uh, the Democrats had a somewhat different constituency, not much, but uh, they were compelled to go along to survive, and they did. So you get this sharp rightward move of uh, both parties. Uh, Clinton wasn't joking when he said that now we're all uh, Eisenhower Republicans. Uh, that's correct. The Democrats are now what used to be called moderate Republicans like Eisenhower, and the Republicans are uh, so deep in the pockets of business you need a telescope to find them. Uh, well, that's uh, uh, ca campaign spending, incidentally, is a very good predictor of electoral victory. And uh, more significant than that and less obvious uh, is that they're very, it's a very good predictor of the policies that are pursued. There's really outstanding work on this by uh, a number of political scientists, primarily Thomas Ferguson, who's the main person who studied it, his book, uh, Golden Rule, and others. Well, to understand, to put, put that into place, what was going on in the 70s and since, it's useful to take a quick look at the post-World War II period. Uh, the 50s and the 60s, uh, which were still under the influence of the New Deal and a powerful labor movement, uh, they were the greatest growth period in American history. And furthermore, it was egalitarian growth. So the lowest quintile, lowest 20%, did about as well as the upper, quint upper quintile. You know, of course, they got more, but um, proportionately. Uh, this is often called by economists the golden age of American capitalism, more accurately, American state capitalism. Uh, in the 1970s, there were major changes. Uh, one was a sh fundamental shift of the economy away from production towards financialization. Uh, the role of financial institutions, they have a role, you know, to direct uh, unused assets to productive uses, and that's more or less what they were doing in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, now, they do almost none of that, and they're probably harmful to the uh, economy. But they also grew enormously. Uh, there were a few percentage of corporate profits back in the 60s. It's now maybe a third, probably hit 40% at the peak right before the recession. Uh, the, uh, uh, and along with this was the hollowing out of production. Um, it's essentially not that production stops, it's just shipped abroad. Uh, that uh, has a lot of advantages. It uh, sets working people in competition with one another uh, all over the world, and that has the obvious effect of lowering wages and uh, benefits. That's fine for corporate profits and for banks and investment firms. It's uh, terrible for the workforce and the middle class, uh, but now we're back to the guiding principle. As long as they are quiet and passive, everything's fine. Uh, meanwhile, uh, state corporate policy, government policy specifically, has been increasingly geared to welfare for extreme wealth and privilege. Uh, the extent of this is pretty shocking when you look at the details. And we all know that, or should know, that uh, inequality has maybe reached the highest level in American history, but that's misleading because the, any, the sharp rise in inequality has to do with the extreme top of the income spectrum, the top 1%, even the top one-tenth of 1%. Now that's where there's been a spectacular increase in wealth. Uh, that's predominantly uh, corporate executives, uh, hedge fund managers, and so on. Uh, tax cuts have been very carefully crafted to benefit the super rich, uh, particularly this tiny slice of super rich. That's very careful, so very carefully done. So take, say, the Bush tax cuts. Uh, it's now a huge burden on the economy, big part of the deficit. Uh, that, remember, they were established in 2001, and uh, they were supposed to last for 10 years. Uh, the assumption is once you establish a tax, uh, uh, it's, it's never going to be, tax cuts never going to be raised because it'll be politically difficult. Uh, when they, they were crafted in such a way that people wouldn't see what was happening. So for the first couple of years, it wasn't egalitarian, but it wasn't hugely in favor of the super rich. Uh, so people had a sense, okay, we're all getting a tax cut. Uh, 
In fact, one of the first things that happened was it was carefully designed. Everybody got a small tax rebate, so you felt good for having a tax cut. Uh, meanwhile, if you look over the 10-year period, what was designed was that as you go through it, it'll be geared more and more to the super rich. And by the end of it, uh, 2010, uh, literally over 50% of the tax cut was going to the top 1%. Uh, but that's not so visible. So, and it was hidden in all kinds of other ways, you know, stock options and so on. Uh, but that's a very careful design, very clever, even has a name. It's called the uh, sunset technique. Uh, you pretend that uh, you're giving a tax cut to everyone, but by the time the sun sets, it's going to the right people, you know, the top 1%. Uh, the, uh, actually, that's happening right now before our eyes. Uh, the lame duck uh, Congress is greatly praised, you know, Obama's praised for his wonderful achievements in the lame duck Congress. Uh, there was one major achievement namely a tax break for the wealthy, uh, the, uh, which of course greatly increases the deficit. Uh, and a, a rather remarkable PR operation was carried out. Uh, in fact, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, the tax cut for the wealthy was opposed by about two thirds of the population. Uh, the deficit, we're told every day, mostly falsely, is a huge problem. But here we are with the Republicans straight out, and Obama going along, increasing the deficit, carrying out a tax cut for the rich, which was the issue, uh, over the objections of the great majority of the population. Well, kind of an experiment, see if people keep quiet even when this is happening before their eyes. Actually, it was more than that. Right at the same time, uh, with everybody screaming about how t awful taxes are, there was a tax increase substantial tax increase for federal workers. Uh, it was disguised. It was called a freeze. But if you think for a minute, a freeze for people in the public sector is identical to a tax increase for people in the public sector. The State of the Union address, uh, uh, Obama's apparently going to announce a five-year freeze. Well, that means a five-year tax increase for federal workers and also a reduction, a freeze, remember, is a reduction because of uh, inflation, population growth, and so on. So he's going to announce a reduction in services for working people and the middle class and the rich don't care, they don't use the services. And that's going to be presented as a great achievement, uh, uh, you know, addressing the deficit and Actually, we should have a deficit during a, a recession, but that's a separate question. And I mentioned before what the deficit is really due to. Half of it, military spending, not for defense, a uh, fact that harms security, and the other half, the totally dysfunctional health care system. Uh, but uh, it all, all makes sense if you have the right uh, principles. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, a ta a tax increase, so-called freeze for federal workers, uh, relies on a ver another very effective PR campaign that's been going on for a couple of months now, uh, namely uh, demonizing uh, working people in the public sector. Uh, that's been successful, as polls show. Now, people are beginning to accept the message that our uh, financial pr uh, crisis is not due to uh, huge bonuses and Goldman Sachs, but to the fact that uh, the teachers and police and uh, firefighters are getting overpaid and have these wonderful pensions and so on. I mean, all total lies, but lying is so routine by now that the, it's, I mean, it's not even worth mentioning. It's just the mode of, uh, the mode of discourse. Uh, the, uh, and the same is going to be true of the presumably, of what is going to be announced in the State of the Union. Uh, there was also, uh, during the lame duck session, an interesting device introduced, a payroll a tax decrease uh, for Social Security. Now, that sounds good, and people are, feel good. They're going to get a little money in the, in the mail. But just think about it for a minute. It's a Trojan horse. The Social Security tax decrease 